What's up, everybody? So I may be overseas, but I have not forgotten about all of you yet. I'm keeping dates in my head, and I'm starting to see June's creeping up, June's creeping up. And because of that, I know many of you will be submitting your primaries soon. What's after primaries? Secondaries. So I figured, why not make a nice video about some tips and tricks about the secondary and also give you some of the resources I use to prepare for them. So without further ado, here's my video showing you how I prep for my secondaries. And more importantly, um, down below you'll see the spreadsheet I use to keep track of everything and I also talk more about that in the video. And I hope you find it helpful. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for all the support. Add me on Snapchat. You guys have been seeing on Snapchatting everything. So other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. What's up everybody? Today I'm here to talk to you about just secondary stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's going to come at you when you start getting your secondaries and I just figure it's better for me to tell you now than later. Um, more importantly, all of my stuff that I'm going to tell you today is going to be objective. So I just am going to give you the cold hard facts and you can interpret that however you want. Hopefully the information helps you. Okay. So with that being said, let's go right now to this. The primary is in, so now what? Well, your secondary onslaught's gonna begin. And I'm, today I'm gonna go over the way you can prepare for it. Uh, then I'm gonna tell you the schools that screen. So you might not know what screening means. What screening means is once you send a primary into a school, they usually will look at some numbers on your primary and we'll see whether or not you should be even given a secondary. So sometimes schools don't give secondaries to every applicant that submits a primary, and I'll tell you what schools those are. Uh, and then I'll tell you schools that are heavily, heavily rolling, and this is the slightly subjective part of the presentation, because this will be based on my experience simply because I know what schools got, um, started releasing acceptances super early and what schools started releasing acceptances much later. And the schools that started releasing acceptances super early are the schools that, in my mind, it got ingrained as heavily rolling, whereas there are also some schools that are non-rolling. And this is very objective. There are certain schools that release all their decisions on one day, and therefore, technically, they are not rolling. Okay, And so that's the stuff I'm going to go over, and let's just get straight into it. But for context you can stop the video here and these are the schools I applied to so hopefully that will give you a bit more information because obviously there are hundreds of med schools in the United States I do not have the knowledge to tell you exactly which ones are rolling and which ones aren't I'm just telling you the ones based on mine that are rolling and are not because those are the ones I dealt with most often all right so with that let's get started the ways to prepare the number one objective way to prepare is to be organized and as you know I have a lot of my data because I was organized through this process so the first thing is create a separate separate email account that has entirely just med school stuff I know it might be too late for someone who's already submitted their AMCAS to be like ah oh, crap you kept the same email. That's fine. In that case, um, within that email, get organized. Start using labels for your secondary. Start using different filters. But if you haven't yet submitted your primary, create a new account and put that email onto your primary. That is a great way, great way to stay organized. Second thing is create a spreadsheet. For your secondaries, you will need to create a spreadsheet. And I will try to link mine below, but you will need a spreadsheet with the school, the prompts, when you receive the secondary, when you should give it back, because that will help you stay on top of things and make sure you get things back. Create a tab on that spreadsheet for passwords. Remember, I applied to 20-something schools. I have to create 20-something portals because I have to submit each school's secondary on its own unique portal. So sometimes the passwords will be given to you. Sometimes the passwords will be things you have to make. You have to keep track of all of that. And if you're trying to do it in your head, it's impossible. So you need to have a tab for passwords, all right? Another tab I will recommend is to create a tab for people you're gonna send to edit your secondaries. Because again, you don't wanna send multiple people multiple edits. It gets annoying, <laughs> all right? I'm just trying to vouch for the people that you're sending it to, and if you send the same person 20 secondaries, that person will hate you. So just try to create a tab, and I was like, okay, here's my friend A. Friend A has already gotten two secondaries. Okay, that means maybe for friend B, I should send him more because friend A has already gotten a lot. You kinda of wanna start doing that. Another tab you should create on your spreadsheet is a tab for important links. As you start doing your own research for schools, you'll come across links that are helpful and links that are really, really essential to helping you answer questions well. You wanna save those links. And if you don't save those links, that can be a detriment. So that's why you have a tab for that. 
And last but not least, I will say create a separate tab for expenses. Every secondary is going to be anywhere between 80 to 100 bucks. So if you really want to keep track of how much you're spending, budgeting your amount, your money, amount of money you need, amount of money you have, you want to create a tab just for the expenses because as you submit those secondaries, the money starts to pile up pretty quickly. All right. I will try to link my spreadsheet, but no guarantees just because it can be difficult. I'll try to link you to the overall format it has, and that way you can kind of use it. Okay. All right. With that being said, here are the more concrete things. So up until now, I was telling you how to prepare objectively, how to prepare before you get the secondaries. But now let's say you want to prepare actually for the writing you're going to have to do in the secondaries. Well, for that, I have some common questions you should start thinking of how to answer. Okay, I'm not saying come up with distinct answers for each of these that you can copy and paste. I'm just saying in your head, try to think of one to two sentences of, of how you're going to answer this. Number one, almost always you will be asked a question on secondaries about diversity. How are you different and why? I think I'll make a video entirely separately about what this question means. But in general, you want to start talking about what makes you different? Don't necessarily think in the lines of race, sexuality, um, gender. Don't think about concrete things if that's something that um, is bothering you. I know I always used to think of diversity in terms of race. That's not what they mean. They're thinking diversity in terms of experiences, diversity in terms of um, talents, diversity in terms of interests. So anything that makes you diverse, think about what that is. I'll make a separate video about it. Second, second question that's commonly asked is, the gap year. What are you doing in your gap year and why? Okay, so if you're taking a gap year, they want to know how you're using your time. Don't just say I'm sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, the other thing, that, um, a common question that gets asked on secondaries, almost across all secondaries, is future. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? In what practice? What kind of medicine? That's something that's going to be asked. Um, another thing, uh, another common theme through almost any secondary is what is the most rewarding experience slash challenging experience you've had? That's something that gets asked. Uh, this next one is actually really specific. UCSD and Vanderbilt University both have a secondary prompt that just says, write an autobiography. And you're like, what the hell? And they literally tell you to write an autobiography. So you have to write an autobiography. Uh, so you kind of want to think about how you would go about doing that. How would you start? How would you end? What steps do you want to do? And again, for any of these, do not start writing out distinct answers. Just think of one to two uh, strategic ways you would answer that question because believe it or not, that is a great way to get started, especially if you haven't even seen the secondaries yet. Okay? And almost always, Actually, this is inevitable. Every school's secondary will have this other question, which says, is there anything that you want to tell us that you haven't told us already? And most people will say no because the application is already so long. But if there is something in your history or there is something in your academic standing you want to bring up, this would be the time to do it. And uh, the last one is what I like to call the dating question of med schools because this whole med school process is like dating, right? You're kind of figuring out what works. So med schools will sometimes ask the question, why us? You know, sometimes they'll ask like, why this school? Why this school? So you want to have to do your research and figure out why that school. All right. So those are just some general questions that are inevitably going to show up multiple times on multiple secondaries. So if you have a general idea of how you're going to answer them, you're much better off right now than you will be two weeks down the road. Schools that screen. Schools that screen, as I already mentioned to you, the secondary is not given to everyone. You sent them your primary, they kind of look over it, they'll be like, okay, do we like this person or not? Uh, <laughs> but not, not exactly in that way, okay? Not exactly in that way. But basically, they'll send secondaries to certain people. The schools that screen, at least from my list, this is not exhaustive, it's only from my list of schools that I applied to include all the UCs, Vanderbilt, and CA North State University. Um, all of these schools basically will look at your primary, and if they think you meet a certain threshold, they will give you a secondary. So if you get a secondary for any, any of these schools, two thumbs up. You just crossed a major stepping stone. This entire like med school process, I've started to see it as like a a hole within a hole within a hole and every hole gets smaller and smaller and like it's harder to get through so <laughs> secondaries are one of the obstacles you have to get through and the schools that screen in this case getting a secondary from them big accomplishment on your part all right so now let's keep going schools that are heavily rolling so this is again a bit subjective on my part because the schools that i perceived as heavily rolling are the schools that i 
based on my investigation on forums, including SDN, based on my talking with other friends, um, are the schools that started interviewing earliest and starting letting started letting people know about acceptances the earliest. Okay, and with that comes all the UCs. All the UCs, I think are pretty heavily rolling. They start giving out interviews pretty early to the people who submit them early. They start giving out acceptances relatively early because the people who interview early are in the first wave of acceptances. Um, and so just from my personal experience, I think the UCs are pretty heavily rolling. In that sense, like submitting early there could be pretty big advantage on your end. You, Mitch, I personally thought was heavily rolling. Like you, Mitch, has this tracker online on their med school where it tells you how, what percent of the class is full. And they had like 170 acceptances given out, I'd say by like the end of December, which is a lot. Um, considering that I think they give out around five to 600, but 170 were gone by the end of December. And I know that one of my friends interviewed there and she had heard back like as early as October or November. And I thought that was super early because at that point I was still interviewing. I hadn't heard back from anyone until I'd say late November. So I think UMich is heavily rolling. Another thing that's heavily rolling, I think U Chicago, USC, and Northwestern, all three of them, again, this could not be true. This is only because I had friends who I heard from where I was like, oh my God, you already heard from them? As in they had gotten a decision uh, way, way before December. And again, this is all assuming you apply early, but the point is these schools are heavily rolling. And for that reason, I suggest you prioritize their secondaries first because let me tell you my story here uh for you mitch i submitted my app like a month and a half after i got the secondary i know you're supposed to do two weeks which by the way i haven't mentioned yet but the general rule of thumb is that you apply to uh schools within two weeks of receiving their secondary which is why i told you to write down the date you get it because you should submit it within two weeks but i obviously didn't do that because i'm a horrible person but for you, Mitch, it took me like one and a half months to get back to them. And at that point, like I felt like I was already at a disadvantage because they had already given out a bunch of acceptances, you know, and again, I didn't get in there. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, on the opposite end of schools that are rolling are the schools that are not rolling. What this means is all of these schools, although they do accept applications as they come in and start scheduling interviews, the earlier the application the earlier the interview. So technically, in a sense, it's still rolling because let's say you submit your interview, uh, your application early to these schools, they will likely give you an interview earlier if you qualify for one. But the problem is just because you interview earlier doesn't necessarily mean you have a higher chance of getting in because all of these schools, Harvard, Cornell, UPenn, pretty much any big Ivy League school um, actually releases all of its decisions on the same day. And what that also means is you getting an interview earlier versus you getting an interview later does not put you at an advantage because um, because all the decisions are made at the end. So after everyone is interviewed, they look at the entire pool and then I think they pick their class. I don't know entire, exactly how it works, but I think that's how it is because these schools want to interview everyone before they pick their class. Whereas if you go back, the schools that are rolling, you know, like let's say you get an interview earlier. Well, then you find out about your decision earlier. So if you get an interview earlier, you're more, li more likely to get accepted simply because there are more slots open, you know, more empty slots. On the other hand, with these schools, if you get an interview earlier, that's not necessarily an advantage because you're still going to be judged with everyone else that gets an interview. So at the end of the day, getting an interview at these schools is kind of uh, still good. It's still fantastic that you got an interview, but an early interview versus a later interview is not as dissimilar as it would have been if it was a rolling school. Because let me tell you right now, I am going to Yale, obviously, but I interviewed at Yale in February, <laughs> which is like near the end of the application cycle. But because of the fact that I actually got my application judged with everyone else that interviewed earlier, it kind of like alleviated the, um, the playing ground. So if you wanted me to be completely honest, what I would tell you when you're filling out secondaries is to fill out these secondaries at a little bit lower priority than you would fill out a secondary of a school that is rolling. Simply because the schools that are not rolling, um, if you get an interview, you're still you're not really at a disadvantage. Whereas if you get a heavily rolling interview school later in the cycle, 
that might be a bit of a more a bit more of a disadvantage. Like if I got an interview to you, Mitch, in like February, I know that 80% of their class is already full. So now I'm competing for the 20% that's left. On the other hand, if I got an interview for Cornell in February, I know that they haven't even picked their class yet. So I still have an equal shot because they haven't picked their class yet, right? So um, just from my two cents, I know there are people that likely disagree with me, but my two cents is if you're going to prioritize secondaries because you're going to get 50 at once, prioritize the schools that are rolling over the schools that are not rolling and then work on the schools that are not rolling, okay? And I know that I definitely left out schools, but basically schools that are heavily rolling and schools that are not rolling, any school that I haven't mentioned is normal rolling, which means it's still rolling, it's still on a rolling basis, but it's just not heavily rolling. So I definitely would prioritize those schools. So if you wanted to prioritize secondaries, schools that are heavily rolling are top, schools that are normal rolling are in the middle, and schools that are not rolling are at the end, simply because of your time and your desire to get into medical school and your desire to optimize time. So I hope that was helpful for you. Let me, if you have any, let me know if you have any questions. I apologize, apologize if I wasn't as clear, but I can always clarify with the comments. So thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Peace.